Volvo or vagina lumps come in different forms, shapes and sizes, all of them important. In this video, let's look at the slightly less toxic but still common and troublesome lumps that develop from ingrown hairs and pimples around the vagina, especially on the vulva, and how to treat them. Plus, what are vulva milia? Who gets them? Why? And how can you get rid of them? First, quick biology class reminder that the vagina is an elastic tube that extends from within the vulva to the first part of the womb or cervix. The vulva is that part of a woman's genitals found between the thighs and beginning from the mons pubis or the pubic hair area. It covers the entrance to the bladder and the vagina. It's also made of fleshy tissues which include the labia or the lips of the vagina and some glands. Let's begin with vulva milia. The word milia is the plural of milium, which refers to a milium cyst. A group of milium cysts or sacs is also known as milia. A milium cyst is a small bump that develops on or underneath the skin. It can be whitish, yellow or pale compared to the surrounding skin and in most cases develops due to the hard protein keratin being trapped underneath the skin. When this happens, it is known as primary milia. Primary milia are most commonly found in babies, but they can also happen in adults. They're located on the skin around the face, the lips, the eyelids, and cheeks. They can also happen on the genitals. The skin around the genital is the same as skin everywhere else on the body, but changes slightly as it approaches the internal organs. Imagine how your skin changes from the jaw as you approach the mouth and the lips towards the inside of your mouth. Vulva milia usually happen as multiple tiny lumps around the vulva measuring one to two millimeters. They are mainly benign, that is harmless, they don't cause any pain and tend not to grow much larger. In addition, if left alone, they may disappear by themselves after a few weeks or months. While primary milia develop from trapped keratin under the skin, there can be other causes of milia, usually leading to something blocking the ducts that lead to the skin surface. These other causes result in secondary milia and examples are certain skin conditions or trauma or injury that's caused to the skin, such as from burns or skin irritation. Irritation. Rarely, some skin creams or makeup products can lead to secondary milia developing. So, if you have milia prone skin, avoid products that contain lanolin, liquid paraffin or liquid petroleum, paraffin oil or liquid, or petroleum oil, and so on. Milia can also develop as we age and at a time when our skin is no longer able to exfoliate itself effectively. Most times, vulval milial cysts do not need any treatment. They will go away by themselves, although this can take some weeks or months to happen. At home, you can try simple exfoliation to see if that will make things better. And this can include washing the vulval area with gentle exfoliating scrubs or using mild chemical exfoliants and soft washcloths or exfoliating gloves with mild and fragrance-free soaps. We usually advise you not to pop any lumps on your skin. In the case of milia, they can't be popped because they contain this hard protein keratin or because they are blocked ducts underneath the skin. In addition, if you're trying to pop away at these lumps, you might increase your risk of developing an infection in the skin around that area. However, if you have vulval milia, they make you uncomfortable because of the way they look and they don't get better using these simple home remedies. They may be removed using different techniques usually best under the care of a specialist like a dermatologist given that vulval skin is very sensitive and depending on the extent or the size of the milia you have you may be offered creams to help with skin exfoliation laser treatment surgical removal or extraction and so on now let's talk about vulval 
or vaginal pimples. These are also benign bumps that develop on the skin of the vulva close to or around the labia. They can look red and inflamed and usually show up with a white head at the tip and can be very tender or painful. Sometimes they are known as vaginal acne and they do develop from a mixture of excess oil produced by the skin and clogging up skin pores, bacteria and other material. They can appear similar to vulval milia in some cases but the two are not the same. Apart from excess oil clogging up the skin pores, other causes of vulval or vaginal pimples is skin irritation or contact dermatitis which can happen as a result of several different triggers. For instance, condoms or lubricant jelly, vaginal douche applicators or fluid, some feminine wipes, laundry detergent, scented bath products, your partner's semen, sweat, tampons or sanitary towels, urine or vaginal discharge. Another way vaginal pimples develop is from something called folliculitis. This is when the hair follicles of your pubic hair become inflamed or infected. You might develop folliculitis from a razor burn or while shaving, wearing tight fitting clothing, or being exposed to unclean water in a bathtub or hot tub or swimming pool. Ingrown hairs can also lead to folliculitis and vaginal pimples. What can you do if you have vulval pimples? Well, here are some suggestions about how you can manage them at home. First, maintain good hygiene. Clean the area with mild fragrance-free soap and warm water. Avoid any harsh or scented products which can irritate the skin and cause dermatitis. Next, exfoliation. Exfoliate the area regularly to help prevent ingrown hairs. Be gentle while you're doing this to avoid further irritation. Gentle exfoliation can help prevent the buildup of dead skin cells and the debris that can contribute to forming ingrown hair. You can use gentle exfoliating products that are specially designed for sensitive areas. Please be careful because too much exfoliation and using harsh products can also be harmful and lead to more skin problems. In this section, I've said gentle what like five times, so you get the point. Next, your clothing. Wear loose fitting, breathable cotton underwear and avoid tight clothing to help reduce the risk of friction and irritation. The next things that could help if you have vaginal pimples are some over-the-counter creams containing mild salicylic or glycolic acid preparations. Make sure you ask the pharmacist to be sure that you're getting only mild forms of these products to avoid further skin irritation. Using a warm compress can also help. Don't forget, avoid picking at or squeezing at your pimples which can lead to infection and for the scarring. Lastly, if things aren't getting better or they keep coming back or getting worse, consult a healthcare professional like a dermatologist to have a look at what's going on and provide you adequate treatment. And now this brings us to discussing vulval ingrown hair. Ingrown hair around the vulva or close to the vagina can appear like red, brown or purple discolored bumps on the skin. And they happen because a strand of hair grows back into the skin after shaving or waxing or tweezing. They are common especially around the genitals and can be quite painful and or itchy. We also know them as razor bumps or barber bumps or shave bumps. Anyone who removes their pubic hair by shaving or waxing or using tweezers is at risk of developing ingrown hairs. However, they do appear to be more common in people whose hair is thicker or coarse or curly and in darker toned and black skin. But why do they happen? Each hair follicle is like a tube or pore in which a hair strand and its roots are growing. So when you shave or wax or tweeze, you're removing the hair strand but not its root or the hair follicle. And as new hair grows, it might curl back into the skin leading to ingrown hairs. An ingrown hair around the vulva will usually appear as a raised bump which is sore or itchy. But if it gets infected, that bump can grow into larger and painful boils 
which if that's not treated could progress into more serious abscesses. This is different from the condition hydrogenitis superactiva or HS, which can also look like boils on the skin, especially around the genitals on the underarms. And I will be covering that topic in separate videos. So if you do have ingrown hair, how are they treated? Before we talk about that, let's consider some essential things if you're waxing, tweezing or shaving your pubic hair. First, how often are you waxing or shaving and what kind of equipment or tools are you using to do so? This is important because shaving or waxing or tweezing excessively or using certain equipment or tools can increase your risk of developing ingrown hairs. And the other thought is, how do you prepare your skin before you shave or wax or tweeze? The following suggestions may help prevent this condition for people who shave. Avoid shaving dry skin. Ensure your skin is prepped first with a gentle wash using mild soap and warm water. Use a clean, sharp razor and always work in the direction that your hair grows, not against it to reduce the risk of hair growing back into the skin. Of course, you can also consider other hair removal methods like depilatory creams, laser treatment, electric shavers, and so on. If you already are dealing with an ingrown hair or ingrown hairs, it's important that you stop shaving or waxing and tweezing and see if the hair will naturally grow out itself. Using warm compresses can also be useful for 10 to 15 minutes at a time. This allows your skin pores to open up and make it easier for the ingrown hair to release itself. But if those measures don't work, you should see your clinician or dermatologist and they can prescribe medications that reduce inflammation or treat infections if they are present. Rarely, they may need to cut into the skin, drain away any pus and remove the ingrown hair. Importantly, avoid the temptation of scratching at or picking out or popping ingrown hairs to avoid the risk of infection, which could lead to scarring and that can be more difficult to treat. We've successfully analyzed these three common potentially troublesome conditions that affect the skin of the vulva or around the vagina. And I hope you found this helpful. So please give this video a like and don't forget to share it with a friend who might find this useful. Let me know which other types of vulval or vaginal conditions you'd like to learn about next and I will see you again soon.